Today I want to tell you a story from 53 years ago, filled with pain, bitterness, and secrets that have not yet been solved. So, 109, Harding Street a suburb of Adelaide a town that is located in the hot and sunny Australia, belonged to the Beaumont family. The family consisted of Jim's father, a clothing salesman, his wife, Nancy, and three children, 10-year-old Jane, 8-year-old Arna, and 5-year-old Grant. Not far from their home was the popular resort of Glenelg, where the children often visited. On Wednesday, January 26, 1966, on a hot sunny day, the main holiday of the year was celebrated, Australia Day. The heat was under 40 degrees and the children gathered on the beach. My father thought about going with them, but eventually went to a meeting for work, in another part of the city. Usually, the children rode bicycles, but this time they decided to take the bus, which reaches the beach in five minutes. The parents fully trusted and relied on their eldest daughter, Jane, who always looked after the younger ones and was very responsible. The children left the house at 10 a.m. and were expected back by noon. The bus stop was about a hundred meters from the house, the children got on the bus and got off near the beach, which was later confirmed by the bus driver and a passenger who even remembered what they were wearing. While the children were on the beach and her husband was meeting with clients, Nancy went to visit, and by noon, as usual, came to the stop to meet the children. However, Jane, Arna, and Grant were not on the bus. Nancy saw nothing suspicious in this, being sure that the children were simply late for the bus and calmly went home to do business, so that she would be back by two o'clock in the afternoon, when the next bus arrived. However, when they arrived at the bus stop at two o'clock, the children were not on the bus again. But she didn't go looking for them, because she was afraid to miss them if they got home some other way. When there were no children on the third bus at 3 o'clock, Nancy began to worry. Some time later, Jim returned home, his meeting with clients did not take place, and when he learned about the absence of children, he immediately went to the beach. After visiting the beach and the surrounding area twice that evening and not finding the children, at 17.30, Jim and Nancy still went to the police. After that, Jim spent the entire night searching the beach, but found no trace of his children. In the morning, the children were officially reported missing. The version of escape was immediately abandoned, children rarely escape in groups, besides the brother and sisters lived absolutely happily in a family from which they did not intend to escape at all. There are two versions left, an accident, in this case, a possible drowning, and a kidnapping. The beach was searched up and down, and the police and volunteers immediately faced the question, is it possible on a holiday, on a crowded beach, unnoticed drowning of three children, as well as the disappearance of their belongings and towels without a trace? The answer was obvious and the search on the beach was stopped. Meanwhile, friends and relatives gathered at the Beaumont family home to support Jim, and Nancy, who was only holding on thanks to sedative pills. Their home phone number was set up so that they were always in touch with the police station. At the same time, the police began searching for witnesses, and such were immediately found. The children were seen near the beach, in the company of a tall, slender blonde man, about 30 to 40 years old, they were at ease, had fun, and willingly played with him. A 74-year-old woman saw children on the beach at 11 a.m. According to her, a man in blue swimming trunks, lying on the grass, was closely watching the children, and soon she saw this man with the frolicking children. Also, between 11 a.m. and 11.15 a.m., Jane's friends saw the children, but they didn't talk. The owner of a store on the coast said that at about 11.45 a.m., he sold Jane cookies and a one-pound mince pie. The store owner also noted that previously, children had never bought meat pies from him, and Nancy did not give such a sum to children, but gave only eight shillings and six pence to pay for the bus and sweets. Based on this, it was concluded that the money was given to the children by this man. Then, about twelve o'clock, other people saw the children, they noted that the man helped the children get dressed and they left the beach together around twelve fifteen. In the area of two to three hours of the day, 
the children were seen by the postman Tom Patterson, who noted that the children were walking far from the beach, in the direction of the house, they were in a good mood and even stopped to say hello to him. The children walked alone, without any escort. These statements put the police at a standstill, so the original version of what was happening had to be forgotten. It is worth noting that Patterson initially said that he saw the children in the morning, but then changed his testimony and said that he could see them either at 13, 45, when the delivery of the letters began, or at 14, 55, after the delivery was completed. But the police did not abandon the version of the abduction of children at noon, suggesting that the postman was simply mistaken. Parents described the children as extremely shy and unable to play so calmly on the beach with a stranger. Then the police assumed that this man was already familiar to the children and got into the trust gradually. This fact was confirmed by Nancy, once Arna told her that Jane had made a friend on the beach, but Nancy did not attach any importance to this, thinking that she meant a peer. A few months later, a woman who lives near Beaumont reported to the police that on the night after the children disappeared, she saw a man accompanied by two girls and a boy. According to her, the company was heading to a house that was located next to her house and was considered uninhabited. Later, she saw the boy walking alone along the road, but was soon caught by a man. The next morning, the woman claimed, the house was empty again. The police did not take this version seriously, not understanding why the eyewitness did not report the incident in a timely manner. As the weekend approached, news of the missing Beaumont children spread across the country. The search for children has become one of the largest in the history of Australia. The case attracted widespread public attention, both in the country and abroad, becoming a vivid example of how parental negligence and child permissiveness allowed by them can lead to tragic consequences. Realizing that children could be at risk in these circumstances, many Australians have changed their attitude to raising their children and increased their control over them. Jim Beaumont once worked as a private taxi driver in a suburban taxi company, after learning about the missing children, his former colleagues joined the search. On January 31st, five days after the children disappeared, Mr. Beaumont appeared on television to ask for the children's return. He hoped that whoever might have kidnapped the children would return them to their parents, or the children would return themselves. Hundreds of calls were received, but all the messages were false. On February 3rd, Mrs. Beaumont held a press conference in her garden, where she expressed hope for the return of the children, but nevertheless assumed that they were still dead. She also shed light on the possible course of events, saying, if the other two were very willing to go with someone, Jane would go with them to take care of them, and would not leave them alone, thus explaining the possible behavior of the eldest daughter. In addition, she expressed her surprise at the fact that the witnesses saw how the stranger clothed the children after swimming. In her opinion, Jane was too shy to allow a stranger to wear shorts. The search, meanwhile, continued. Divers carefully searched the bottom at a considerable distance from the coast. In the future, various investigators, psychiatrists, and parapsychologists were invited to investigate, but nothing was found. 